Welcome to Mancinelli's Math Lab. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, requested video. Let's cover this question. In my opinion, this is a hard question. In my opinion. Just my opinion about it. Um, what I'm going to do here uh, is quite a bit different um, than what you may see in the solution. I'm going to actually treat this as a well-known random variable. So, details are as follows. We have 27 pieces of luggage, and we know that four of them were damaged. And um, so I have a random variable. I'm interested in something to do with this random variable n, the number of insured pieces of luggage out of the damaged ones, out of the four that were damaged, right? So we don't know how many were insured. Let's just let i be the number that are insured. So the complement of i, of course, are the ones that are not insured. Now we do know the following though. Think about this for a second. I mean, I don't know how many are insured, but uh, how many are not insured? Well, this right here, might as well just call this 27 minus I, right? However many there are insured, I mean the rest of them are uninsured. You're either insured or uninsured, assuming you're a bag, <laughs> assuming you're luggage. So anyways, we're also given this probability n is 1 equals 2 times probability n is 0. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to use the hypergeometric random variable to describe n. Kind of like binomial. Why can I not use binomial? Because these are not independent. If you think about it, I mean, these pieces of luggage, them being um, the number that are going to be insured, uh, you're not replacing. There's no replacement here, right? So not independent. I'm going to use hypergeometric. Now, to use hypergeometric, we do have probably the, the trickiest part is to set up the PMF, the probability mass function. Now, typically, I wouldn't even explicitly write the mass function. I would just think about this logically. Um, hypergeometric to me is a little bit intuitive, actually. So, let me go through this though. Let's write down the mass function probability uh, n equals m. So. What is this business? Probability n equals n. Okay, I'm first going to deal with, well, it's the easy part, the denominator. Remember, n is the number of insured out of four damaged pieces, right? So what are the total, um, what's the total basically, um, what are the number of ways I can get four damaged pieces from 27 pieces? So the denominator must be 27 choose four. How many ways can I get four damage pieces from 27? 27 choose four. By definition, the, the number choose. Now up here, um, for the numerator, in this piece, I need to figure out, I'm going to deal with the insured. So of the insured, um, how many are damaged? Well, n is n. Probability n is n. So there could be n insured. Okay. Now what's left over? A couple things to keep in mind here. Uh, n and this number, these two numbers I'm going to put right here, these must add up to 4, and the top numbers of the choose must add up to 27. Well, this is the complement of i, so this of course is 27 minus i, and this right here, if I'm choosing n of them to be insured, that means 4 minus n, 4 minus n must be uninsured. That's right. Now think about this for a minute. As I mentioned, a little sanity check you must have that n plus 4, n, 4 minus n equals 4. It does. And you must have i plus 27 minus i equals 27. It does. This is my probability mass function. Uh, now I can answer, well, now I can utilize this equation. We're given this, right? Probability that 1 of 4, uh, exactly 1 was insured, is equal to twice the probability that none were insured. So kind of annoying wording, but I'm going to use this. Let's use that now. So um, let's get rid of this. We want probability n is 2, but let's just go off of this equation right here. Let's just plug this stuff into my probability mass function. This tells me on the left-hand side that I have i choose 1 times uh, 27 minus i choose 3 is uh, divided by, I'm not even going to have enough room, son of a gun, son of a gun. So let's, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Oh, so frustrating. 
All right, let's do it. This is what we have. What do we have? Where am I going to write this? Man, oh man. All right, this is what we got. We got probability n equals 1 equals twice probability n equals 0. This means, using my um, representation, my mass function, this means that capital I choose 1 times 27 minus I choose 3 divided by 27 choose 4 is equal to twice probability n is 0. Um, this is I choose 0 times uh, 27 minus I choose 4 divided by 27 choose 4. This is the equation we need to work with. Immediately I see some cancellation. The denominators here are completely gone immediately. I like that a lot. Now I'm going to use, so I doubled the equation. Now I'm going to use um, the definition of choose. The definition of choose. You should all know the definition of a choose number. Maybe I'll remind you real quick. Um, n choose r, which is n choose r, is equal to n factorial over r factorial, n minus r factorial. Let's use that. Let's take some of this stuff away. Okay. Um, quite frustrating, but I am out of room. So let's do that. Let's get rid of this. So what are we going to get here? What are we going to get here? So continuing with this equation here, I have the following. I have I choose 1 times 27 minus I choose 3 is equal to I choose 0 times 27 minus I choose 4, choose 4. And then times, there's a 2 here, and a 2. So that's what we have. We just need to solve this equation for i. So as I mentioned, I'm going to use the definition of these choose numbers. Use the definition of those. So not too bad, not too bad. Hopefully you're familiar with this. I choose 1, I don't even need to use that. This says how many ways, um, uh, how many ways can I choose uh, one thing from a set of i objects? Well, there are i ways to do that. Think about the logic there. So this is i times 27 minus i choose 3. I'll use the definition. This is 27 minus i factorial divided by 3 factorial uh, times 27 minus i minus 3. So 24 minus i factorial. Using the definition. Equals, what's i choose 0? How many ways can I choose 0 things from i? Well, only one. So 2 times 1 times 27 minus i choose 4 is 27 minus i factorial divided by uh, 4 factorial times 27 minus i minus 4 is 23. 23 minus i factorial. Wonderful. Fortunately, some nice things happen here. Um, immediately, I can get rid of this, which is quite nice. This is gone, this is gone. So now, what do I have? It looks like I have this situation here. I'm gonna do maybe a little bit of manipulation here. I'm gonna get, I guess, i by itself. So this tells me that I have the following. I have i is equal to, bring this stuff over there. It looks like it's going to be two, I'm just gonna do this carefully, times three factorial times 24 minus i factorial divided by 4 factorial times 23 minus i factorial. All right, this is looking good. This is looking good. 3 factorial over 4 factorial is 1 fourth. 2 divided by 4 is a half. So i is equal to 1 half. Now what is 24 minus i divide, uh, factorial divided by 23 minus i factorial? Which one is bigger? Remember what factorial means. So this is going to be 24 minus i times 23 minus i times 22 minus i. It's sorry, this is 23 minus i times 22 minus i. So what does this equal? This is just 24 minus i. Man, that is nice. That is quite nice. 
linear equation in the unknown i, which means I can find it. I can absolutely find it. Uh, this tells me um, that 2i equals 24 minus uh, i. So it looks like 3i equals 24. So it looks like i is equal to 8. Wow. I mean, does it work out any nicer than that? Amazing. Amazing. Let's answer our question. Our question is, um, what is the probability that n is equal to 2? Write down the probability mass function again, or just think about this logically. I mean, we're choosing out of eight insured bags, we want exactly two, and out of the rest, uh, 27 total, so out of 19, we want two uninsured, divided by the total, which was, uh, how many bags did we have total? We had uh, 27, and we wanted to total, uh, and completely, well, we damaged four. So this is my answer, whatever the hell that is. I'm not gonna do it, it's annoying. What is it? 0.27. So this is the answer, 0 0.27. That takes care of it. Tricky question. Very tricky in my opinion. Uh, tell me what you think.